this is going to be a quick little project. Anyone who's seen some of my videos has noticed the background that we've had. Uh, this is images of Xanadum, uh, the lair of Overlord Doomcock. So there's lots of amenities in Xanadum because, well, let's face facts. Like any supervillain, Doomcock tends to be uh, someone who enjoys his simple things in life. And since I've already built a bar, I think the next logical step that I need as an accessory is a coffee machine because everybody knows every supervillain needs coffee. This is going to be made out of styrene plastic. I like using styrene because it's a pretty simple base to work with. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to make this little um, make a little countertop on top of this thing. So I'm going with about 10 inches high because it doesn't have to be overwhelmingly large. I do want it to uh, fit in with the rest of the uh, theme that we're doing. So this is about two and a half inches wide. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up so I have about three quarters of an inch here. Three quarters of an inch here. Like that. And I'm going to draw this down here. Now this isn't going to matter with all the lines on this because it's going to be eventually covered in paint anyway. I have to try and make this stuff as accurate to the real Xanadum as possible without giving away trade secrets. As that could get me a visit from giant robots that could kill me. And I try to avoid death uh, as much as I can. Tends to make one late for supper. Okay, so this is going to go about six inches high here measure of here it's one of the nice things about styrene <clears throat> it's very easy to work with a couple score lines and you can just snap it it goes along very nicely so there's my base right there. Double check my measurements. As they say, measure twice, cut once. Okay. Looks good. Okay. Now, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut this piece right here. Line everything up nicely. <clears throat> now, when you're working with styrene, I find the best thing to do is put a very light score mark. Because if you push too hard, you're likely to uh, slip or move your ruler. And that creates another problem. Okay, so you see, I just took my knife, scored it a little bit. Now all I have to do is pick it up. And it snaps very easily like that. <clears throat> okay, this part's a little trickier because I will have to cut a little bit deeper in the corner when I go to get that out of there. Let's go this way. and your blade will like to 
stay in the track as long as you're keeping a light press on it. I think along with this, I'm going to have to make some kind of robotic barista. Probably have to give the robotic barista blue hair. <laughs> Let me get an official Starbucks employee. I wonder if Doomcock has ever thought about having a his own brand of coffee. I should probably farm that out to Fett for hire. See what he could come up with. Again, without giving away too many trade secrets, because I'm sure <clears throat> he's probably got some kind of investment strategy in some South American country where he has his own brand of coffee. Again, nice soft score, a little bit deeper. We can go a little bit deeper. Okay. Now we go up six inches to our three quarters of an inch. A sharp pencil point is highly recommended when you do this. And if you've been to art school, you always keep your pencil sharpener with you, which is a knife. <clears throat> Best, sharpest point you're going to get on your pencil is with a razor. Okay, we go to six inches here. And... Six inches here. I should really do that whole time lapse thing because I'm sure this is really boring to watch. Okay. Snap here. One, and two cuts. Okay. See a little twisting back and forth, and there we go. Clean up the corner a little bit. Now we have two sides for our coffee machine. Okay, now we have to figure out how wide I want to make it. And I'm thinking probably let's let's pick on Mr. Ambrosia here. And we want this thing to be about as wide as he is. So you figure that your average action figure hmm. is going to be about four inches wide. So I think we'll go four and a half inches. Okay. Right to here. Right to here. Okay. 
now. side <clears throat> now we're going to want this to go six inches high and we'll cut it straight across All right, there's our first part. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cement this right to here and get it nice and square on there. As soon as I find out where I put my cement. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> now, the key, if you've never made plastic models when you were a kid, uh, people my age did them all the time, but... You know, that was before video games and stuff like that. You do not want to use big, massive globs of this. What this actually does is it melts some of the styrene, so it actually cements it to this. It's not just a glue. It kind of melts the plastic together, so it's almost like a weld. And this stuff comes in different strengths. I've learned to appreciate the uh, the basic orange version because it's um, some of these things really do a number. They'll actually disintegrate a lot of your uh, your styrene. And you don't need a whole lot of this. It just just a slight little bead. You don't want it so it's all globbed out really does nothing for you it gives you plenty to work with line that up like that and here is our cabinet portion <clears throat> now I have to put this piece on in the back like so Set this guy down this way and just put a little bead here and a little bead here. Okay. We lined it up this way. So, and there we go. Okay. Now, right there, we've got the base of my little coffee machine that we're going to build. <clears throat> okay. So, now, I have to figure out how I'm going to do the counter. The little counter portion of this, okay, which is a little hard to see. I should have elevated this camera a little bit, but we get the idea. Okay. So I'm going to take a look around. I have this stock of little heavier styrene. You can see it's a little bit thicker than this one. And I'm going to put this on top as sort of like a countertop. So I want it to overlap just slightly. So I'm going to measure this thing out. So right there, it's going to be, I'm going to take it to two inches. Two inches by, let's 
see. Four and three quarters. Okay. So slide this out of the way. Take this piece here. Right here. Two inches. Two inches. this off to four and three quarter now I have to do some quick math here we have to figure out what half of four and three quarters is what is it two two and three eighths right here okay and we measure this here four and a half so this will be two and a quarter. Okay. And we'll figure this out here. So we line that up that way. It'll sit just like that. Okay. Trim this thing down a little bit. Now, I think the better way to do this will be to mark this right here. Half of four and a half is two and a quarter. And I'll line this up just like that. <clears throat> That'll be my base. Okay, so we're going to just dab a little bit of cement on this part. And very lightly, no need to get all sloppy and gross. Okay, put this on the back edge here. Okay, plug my back in, line that up, and there we go. Okay, so there's my countertop. I'll probably end up putting something along the bottom. Okay, now. Like any self-respecting barista, we're going to need some machinery that's going to overhang at the top. Okay, so I'm going to plan this out and see what I can come up with. And for that, I'm going to hit a little pause and be right back. So I added a few things here. <clears throat> These are some cast pieces. I use from various positions. I can't move it around too much because it's got you know, the glue is still curing. Just a little adjustment there. It should be okay. Right. Now, I did add. You really can't see it from this angle. I'll show them in a minute or so. <clears throat> I have um, a. Uh, little spill tray in there that I added. I just took some thin pieces of styrene and laid that in there. So it makes it look like it's a little bit of a drainage compartment. And of course we're going to need doors you know, for storage and things like that. Place that just like that. And this piece here. Can go on this way. <clears throat> I got a little doohickey here. I don't know if it will stick or not. 
So I'm going to see if I can't use a little super glue to attach this. This Gorilla super glue is pretty impressive stuff. Give it a couple minutes to cure and it uh, works wonders. There. Let's see what else we have here in my marvelous bag of tricks. <clears throat> Always keep yourself a uh, <clears throat> little stash of various shapes and pieces that you would think of as scrap because you never know when they're going to come in handy when you just need couple little pieces here and there. One thing I am going to do with this, I'm going to take this thin piece of styrene, <clears throat> I'm going to cut down a couple little shapes in it. That should look somewhat familiar. To the, the nitty gritty here about how to make this thing <clears throat> look somewhat functional. Piece of this rod, styrene rod, put a little cement on the end, and we can attach this right there. Okay. So you can kind of see there how would I little button on whoops almost lost that one sometimes they go flying when you put them together Couple little dials. Okay. You can see the little the little grid that I made. Okay. And we're gonna take a couple pieces like this. that right there. I'm going to take this thing and I'm just going to kind of do a little random effect here. See if I can actually make it work. It's going to be a little tricky. But I'm going to give it a shot. Okay. I'm just going to eyeball this and this. this <clears throat> there there 
here and there. Hoping this comes out okay for just eyeballing it. Okay. And I think this is going to work out pretty well. There we go. This is. One of the little straps that R2-D2 has on his chest plate, I guess you would call it, or his barrel. And I'm going to put that right there as a little homage to Star Wars. And back when Star Wars was great and not just the best ideas they could come up with was you know, a soccer ball that rolls. My apologies to anyone who's a fan of the sequel trilogy, but I, I'm i not. <laughs> it really is not my cup of tea. Go here. Put a little score in this thicker piece. You just snap it. We have this here just like this. There we go. And I think, let's see, if we go right. Yeah. Right there. And we're going to take a little piece of this stuff that I made the um, <clears throat> the drain out of, drain grid. If I can get the piece to fall down there, right? Then I want to cut a new piece. And I already have one started here. Okay. And take this guy. And we're going to do... Okay, so you have this, a little cement there, put him right here, this in here, look like a big drawer, Let me get it more to the center. This thing go right here like that, and okay.
There we go. Okay. So there is, for the most part, the Xanadoom coffee machine. One more thing to do. I'm going to put this on top. A little, little ringy dingy on top. Ooh. about that. I think that'll fit just about right. Okay. <clears throat> so I go here. And I believe this is three quarters of an inch and a little bit heavy. Okay. So take this thing. Place it here. Cross. Okay. Take a little cement. Yikes. Try not to break everything I made. Little cement on the top. My apologies if this just got blurry because, you know, focus. I really like this camera, but it it's really best for things that sit still and not move. Okay, so I got that on top there. All right, I'm going to add a couple more things. Hit pause. So here's the finished product. A near exact replica of the coffee maker that exists far below the Earth's surface in Xanadoom. Little wire action going on there. Some little tubes and things carrying all that life giving coffee. And that's how people exist at the center of the earth. Anyway, uh, you can use this method for any kinds of little uh, science fiction based uh, dioramas you're building. And you can put little things like this to really make sure your display pop the little things that happen in the background. Uh, read up on some of the, the things that ILM did. And you can see a lot of these uh, uh, these kinds of things pop up in the background. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like, uh, subscribe to the channel if you like what you saw, and uh, I hope to bring you some more of this stuff on a regular basis. Thanks for watching.